as promised now, uh, the wait is over. We're going to play you a brand new single, brand new track, sorry, from Tom Chaplin, who you will know as Tom from Keen. And Tom is on the line to have a little chat with me right now. Hi, Tom. Hello, Joe. How are you? I'm very well, yeah. How are you? Good. I'm all right, thank you. Um, God, I haven't seen you for ages or spoken to you for ages. Yeah. Yes, well, uh, you know, I've, I've been away. Uh, I've, I've been having some, uh, some incredible times and some, and some terrible times. So, um, uh, it's, and, you know, working on, on a solo record. So, uh, you know, I've, I realise that it, it's a lot of hard work, you know, because Tim always did the writing for Keen. Mm. So I, I've kind of come to realise what a, what a massive task it is. Have you sent him a text going, oh, yeah, I, I realise actually now you did work quite hard. <laughs> so, dis- sorry about that. We discussed it in detail. Yeah. <laughs> He's going, I told you, I told you. Yeah. So, um, so you've been away, you've been working on this album. Keen, what, what do, let's get this out of the way straight away. Uh, what's the situation with Keen? So basically, um, end of 2013, we, we kind of wrapped up after doing our greatest hits, which kind of sounds sort of unbelievable anyway but um uh, you know i said to the guys I, I i was just kind of you know desperate to to, to get this kind of to, to itch this scratch you know uh, sorry scratch this itch of um doing a solo record and, and it just sort of felt like this this was the time to do it so so yeah so i kind of threw myself into it you know uh, after about six months of, of furiously writing i, I hit a, br- a brick wall and it was um you know sort of uh, it became a bit of a disastrous time and you know my problems with uh with drug addiction sort of resurfaced and so i sort of ended up kind of you know my whole life kind of going off the rails and um so from from that point onwards yeah 2014 was a was a weird and, and tough year even even though my my mm. daughter was born that year oh um, my gosh yeah i know and so <laughs> then that year sort of it sort of went by and, and things had got worse and worse and worse and uh, yeah, beginning of 2015, I, I kind of was basically about to, to lose everything in my life, putting myself in a lot of danger as well. So, Tom, can I just ask who, I mean, this was you kind of on your own. I'd imagine your, the, your bandmates, your family or your friends around you will have been so aware of the struggles that you've had along this, the way. And they will all have yeah. been trying to, to help you. And, uh, and you wouldn't listen to them or, you know, what, what, was, what was going on? Yeah, well, they, you know, they... They had really tried to help me a lot, you know, over the years. And th- there have been lots of good times. And uh, there were times when they thought, well, it, it's not a problem anymore. Um, but, it, but when it resurfaced, it, you know, each time it, it's come back, it's, it's been worse than the time before. And, and, and I think to, towards the end of 2014, it was just so bad that, that really, to be honest with you, pretty much everyone in my life had, had kind of given up on me. Uh, and, and terrible as that sounds, it was it was kind of the thing that I that I needed to to realise what I was about to lose. Um, and, and so yeah, so I, so, so I got, you know, I got to the end of this crazy binge, and I thought you know e- either I'm going to kill myself doing this, or or I've got to try and do something to get better. And 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 you know it was it was really strange. It was almost like I could hear a voice in my head saying you know if you make it through this night you know tomorrow you have got to change the way you do things in your life and i did you know and it was <laughs> i don't i don't believe in miracles but it, it felt like a kind of crazy beautiful miracle because i got up the next day and I, and i and ever since then i really have changed my life and so many great things have happened to me in, the, in that time and who did you get help from who did you reach out to because i can't imagine it's possible to do this entirely on your own <laughs> No, I've, I've been in and out of uh, addiction centres over the years, and, and that was one part of it. But actually, I, 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 I went into doing this very in-depth psychoanalysis, which is, um, you know, not something you, you do lightly, because it, it's kind of uh, investigating all the dark corners of, of yourself and, um, you know, sharing it with another human being. Um, but it was very liberating to do that you know i i, I realized that actually that that idea of a, a problem shared is a problem halved is is very true and uh as soon as i was kind of honest and vulnerable and all of those things i, I suddenly realized that that life is something that can can be enjoyed and not sort of trying to fight against it the whole time is it something that comes from 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 personality is it the business that you were in is it things that have happened to you along your in your life along the way uh, I think it's a it's a combination of, of many things. It's such a, a kind of complex problem. But I, but yes, of course, there are things 
you know, back in all, all the way back in your childhood and uh, I guess the, the, the way you're raised, uh, the things that you experience along the way. Um, and, and certainly, you know, I, I think being in a, in a band and having kind of success and adoration, they're, they're very sort of seductive, intoxicating things in themselves. So it's, it's easy to get swept up in that stuff. And, um, you know, uh, I, yeah, of, of course, uh, there, there are many kind of weird insecurities and frailties I have as a human being. And, uh, and, I, and I think all of those things kind of have, have contributed to my problems. Yeah, and the drink of the drugs just kind of blotted out and help you. Well, they're a coping strategy to a certain point and then they're destructive <laughs> to, you know, ultimately. Right, yeah. And all of this is is documented on the on the record, I guess. And you went to work with Matt Hales, who people will know from Aqualung, uh, but he's now so much more than Aqualung, isn't he? He is, yeah. He's a, he's a lovely guy. I You know, uh, Matt and I kind of share the same sort of, comedic inspirations, you know, from, from childhood, sort of watching Endless Blackadder and Fry and Laurie and stuff. So, so when we met, we, we kind of had this sort of, you know, language that was already there between the two of us. And uh, we, we did a fair bit of writing together. Um, and, and I just loved the work that he'd done on, on sort of demos for the writing that we did together. So it seemed a logical step to um, to take him on as producer. And um, yeah, we got like got on like a house on fire. It was great. So how would you describe this album? Is it is it a fun album to listen to? It must be incredibly, um, it's obviously very personal and possibly cathartic for you. It is, yeah. Mm. I mean, I you know, the th- I think the thing about it is that it, it's a story, really. It, it was never intended to be that way, you know, but, it, but it's almost taken on a kind of, you know, it has a sort of almost a, a concept to it. You know, last year I wrote 40 songs and had, had all these, these songs to choose from, but... But the, the ones that seemed the strongest were the, the, the sort of deeply personal songs about everything that's gone on in my life over the last few years. So a sort of a story of being completely in the wilderness and in the darkness and trying to find resolution and then, you know, finding inner peace. And so, you know, the, the album actually, as it, as it happens, kind of has that narrative through it. It starts in the very darkest place and, and ends with this idea of, of resolution at the end of it. I hope it'll appeal to, to anyone who uh, is in that, in that place of darkness. And where do we find you today? How, are you, how, how is life with you now? Life is utterly brilliant. You know, yes, I'm, good. I, I'm just having, having a complete ball. You know, I'm, obviously, I have this album of which I'm incredibly proud. There was a big part of me that thought this will never happen. Uh, and so to, just to have the album itself and have it done and be so proud of it is, is, a, is a wonderful thing for me as a human being. But, but now, of course, you know, I get to do everything else um, that, that goes with that. So, you know, I've got to, together a, a group of lovely musicians and we're, we're working out how to play, play the songs, which are kind of complicated. But of course. That's very exciting. And figuring out all those things that I think maybe in some ways I sort of started to take for granted in keeping, like, you know, the artwork and just putting the whole sort of thing together. And, it, and it's just, it's very exciting for me to, to be doing this and, and to be back out there. I think we hear this time and time again of artists who've been around and then literally a decade later of bringing new music, but actually relishing every single second, having so much more artistic input into it and just more in control, I suppose. And that sounds what how you are. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, it's, that's an inevitability, I suppose, of doing a, so, a solo thing. You know, obviously I have kind of complete control over every decision that's being made and and there are pros and cons to that, but it does certainly put you right at the heart of the whole thing. And um, I, I'm, I'm really, as you say, it's, it's a thing that can be really relished. So uh, I, I'm, I'm enjoying it. And fatherhood, how, how's, how's that at the moment? It's glorious. <laughs> you know, as I said, the worst of my problems coincided with the, the, the first year of my daughter's life. So it was, it was a pretty, it was a pretty tough time trying to. Well, in fact, you, you can't really do both things. No, so you weren't um, there, I guess. Uh, well, I, I was there and then I wasn't there and I was just very unreliable, very un, untrustworthy. And yes, by the, by the end of it, it, it was very hard for me to, to, to be a part of her life. So, you know, now I'm available to her and to, to my wife and the people that love me. It's, it's really wonderful. And I, you know, I, I miss 10 seconds away from her. Mm. Um, so it's going to be it's going to be a tough tough year going away on tour and all of that but because uh, she's given me a whole new perspective and you know is a wonderful part of my life 
Excellent. And when can we get to see you? When, when's the tour all kick off? When's that happening? Um, there's a tour in October in the UK. The specific dates will all be, you know. Yeah, rolled out. Yeah. Okay, so autumn time. So will you, will you come in and play live on our show as well? I would love to. I Excellent. Love to. Good. Yeah. Um, it's so nice to talk to you and we'll chat more next time I see you. And we'll just do this thing now. Get Put the record out there, shall we? Let everyone hear it. Yes, please.